Hello. Good day to all my Form 5 students. Today we are here to continue on the chapter Polymer. Now, please remember that in our previous video, teacher have wrote the chapter Carbon Compound. And I was explaining about polymer and natural rubber. I want students to know that these those videos were made two years ago when Form 5 were doing KDSM syllabus. So now we are in KSSM syllabus. So some of the chapters might have changed. So please don't panic. Teacher have arranged even though some of the subtopics have been mixed with other topics. The introduction and also the content of the knowledge of chemistry is still the same. Please remember that even though when I was explaining, I would have said it is from this chapter, that chapter, which does not correlate with the chapters that you are learning now because of, all the, because of the change of our syllabus. But please remember the content of chemistry, knowledge of chemistry is still the same. Okay, now let's continue. In my previous video, Teacher was explaining roughly about polymerization, polymers, polymerization, and also I was mainly concentrating on natural rubber and vulcanized rubber. But in your syllabus or home pipe, teacher has to add on few contents. So that is the reason why I have added this new video, lesson video, where in this chapter polymers. We are going to discuss on type of polymers, okay, type of polymers and also polymerization, okay, polymerization. Now, in our previous video, teacher have explained what are polymers basically. So, my this video, I want students to understand is just an extra information which is needed for this polymer chapter. Now, let's start. Huh? So, since teacher have explained how we produce polymers and I have also explained the concept of monomers in our previous video, I hope students can understand the meaning of polymer, polymerization as a process and also the smallest unit of polymer which is monomer. Now, let me explain type of polymers. So, we have three type of polymers which are called thermoplastics, thermosets, and elastomers. Now, please remember that these polymers have very different uh, characteristics. Okay, they have very different characteristics. Let's look what are the characteristics that we are supposed to see here. So, please remember that plastics, okay, so these are thermoplastics. So, these are example of plastics. Now, please remember out of polymer, thermoplastic and thermosets are two types of plastics because plastic is a good example of polymer. So, let's do thermoplastics. Thermoplastics has linear chain without cross links. So, that is the reason why sometimes you have heard that the plastic can be heated and remolded into something else. So, that is actually thermoplastic. Example of thermoplastics are polythene, perspex and PVC. Why thermoplastics can be remolded and heated is because they will melt when they are heated and becomes cold, hard when they are cold. So, that is the reason why you can heat up thermoplastic and another reason is they have linear chain without cross links. So, the main uses of thermoplastics will be electric wire for insulation purposes, packaging material, pails and plastic bags. Okay, so these are from thermoplastics. Now, let's go to number two, thermosets. Thermoset has one problem where if it has the cross link, 
Can you see the cross link? You can see the cross link among amongst the linear chain. These are the cross link amongst the linear chain. So what happens is because they are having cross links amongst the linear chain, they cannot be remolded or recycled. Okay, they cannot be remolded and recycled. So they only decompose because they cannot melt when heated. They can straight away decompose. And these kind of plastics might produce poisonous chlorine gas. So that is the reason why thermosets are a bit dangerous when it comes to environment. So example of thermosets are bakelite, melamine and also resin epoxy. Melamine are used as uh, for our uh, dinnerware. Melamine is used as our dinnerware and for plastic. Bakelite is usually used for electric plugs, car bumpers and handles of iron cookware. Handles of iron cookware because they can stand heat. Okay. Melamine is usual dinnerware. And resin epoxy is usually a type of epoxy or glue. Now, the last type of polymer, but please remember this is not plastic. Huh? So, the last type of polymer is elastomer. From the word, students can identify what are elastomers. They have the elasticity property. So they have they are high elastic elastic properties and they cannot be easily recycled. That is another problem for polymers because they are synthetic polymers. Okay, and example are silicon rubber and neoprene. Silicon rubber is usually used for medical purposes, and neoprene usually used for um, as for diving, okay, for diving wetsuits, small boats and also boots, they use neoprene, alright. So, there is another example, okay, of elastomer, which is, they call it as SBR, okay. So, students can look up in your reference book. SBR stands, from, stands for styrene, boot, boot dye-in. Okay, boot dye-in rubber, styrene, boot dye-in rubber. Now, this is usually used for, to make tires, okay, to make tires because of their elasticity. Now, let's go to, now in our previous video, teacher did explain about polymer, but I did not explain to students about two types of how polymers are produced. So, very easy because this is just addition contents that teacher have to discuss. Okay, now polymerization involves two types of polymerization which is addition polymerization and contents polymerization. Now, let's look at the difference. If you can remember the chapter carbon compound, alkenes will go through polymerization. Why? Because they want to get rid of the carbon-carbon double bond. So, that is the reason why Addition polymerization is said to be where double monomers with double covalent bond between carbon-carbon bonds join together to produce polymer. So what happens is, can you see the double bond? This is monomer of ethene added with another monomer of ethene. And what happens is, then it will produce a polymer called polythene. Now, students can see that the double bond has gone missing thanks to the polymerization process. So, in fact, we can see that alkene goes through polymerization because it wants to get rid of the double bond. Now, let's go to, so by here what they, you can see is they add, the monomers are added to themselves just because they want to get rid of the double bond. Now, let's look at second type of polymerization which is condensed polymerization. So this is one polymerization where the monomers combine or join and eliminate high water or hydrogen chloride molecule. That means when the molecules are combining, molecules in the sense of monomers are combining, they will eliminate at least one water molecule 
or hydrogen chloride. Okay, and please remember that sometimes the monomers can come from two different types. They can become come from different two different types of monomers can combine to become one polymer. Unlike your addition reaction where the monomers will be from the same type. Alright. Okay. Now, for example, teacher has given one diagram. So, just for students understanding because I don't have enough room in this uh, space, in this uh, board. I only managed to give students one example. But I hope you can understand what teacher meant by condensed polymerization. So, have a look at this molecule. We can find that this, you can roughly see, students can roughly see that this molecule is totally different from this molecule. Okay, so this molecule is totally different from this molecule. So, this is what we mean by the monomers can be from two different type of functional groups. Alright, okay. So, what happens is I am going to show how water is eliminated here. Now, can you see that I have highlighted the H and OH here? Okay, so can you see that the water is eliminated and the molecules will combine to form polymer? Alright, and you can see the water molecule is being eliminated. So, this is how you produce nylon. Okay, a type of polymer which is very useful to produce ropes. Okay, ropes and materials and all that. Alright, okay, so please remember condensed polymerization we eliminate at least water or hydrogen chloride molecule. Here, teacher can't give two examples. So, and they can be combined by two different types of monomers, like what you can see here. Okay, so take your time to see here that you can see two different monomers are combined to produce one polymer, unlike your addition polymer, where Monomers must be from the same functional group. Okay, monomers must be from the same functional group. So that is the reason why this, as because what happens is here, these are all synthetic polymer. One thing teacher forgot to mention is thermoplastic, thermoset, and elastomers are example of synthetic polymer. Okay, so in our previous video, teacher has explained about synthetic and natural polymer. So, examples of synthetic polymer, and what I have done here is, teacher has explained how synthetically polymers are produced, which is addition polymerization and condensed polymerization. So, I hope students can understand the example of polymers that teacher has given you. Okay, so uh, till then, let's meet in our next video. Take care. See you all.